Hey guys, welcome to the episode. We have a very special guest with us today. So let's get into the conversation and learn more about the guest and also the topic of the conversation for today. Hello, Professor. Very, very glad to have you. Super excited to about the conversation as well. So why don't you please go ahead, introduce yourself and then let's continue with the conversation. Hello, Pavan and hello, everyone. My name is uh, Julio Buccioni. I'm an Associate Professor in Entrepreneurship and Innovation in the Trinity Business School, where we are at the moment. Um, we are part of Trinity College, one of the top 100 uh, universities in the world. And what I do here, I do teaching and researching in innovation and entrepreneurship. Professor, first question for you is, what do you like about your job? What is it something that excites you on a daily basis? Uh, that's a very good question. I, I would say that um, uh, being a professor is a privilege. It's a privilege because you get to spend time on uh, studying topics that really passionate you. So it's about freedom. It's about contributing to the development of society. And uh, because we are in the business school, it's about finding uh, new ways to explain to students and to society in general how business works. Okay. 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 Uh Professor, then the next question I have is, you have been to India recently. Well, what is it something that excited you about India? Does it have to be one thing only? (laughs) Because I I got many uh, exciting things uh, while I was in India. Well, the first thing is uh, the passion that uh, people I met show for what they do. So as one professor from uh, Indian School of Business, put it, uh, India is an aspirational society. I keep thinking about that definition and I keep thinking about the people I met and how much aspirational uh, they are in pursuing uh, their career objectives on a daily basis. That would be, first off, what I'm taking on from my uh, first trip to India. And the second item uh, is uh, people kindness. People are really kind and make you feel comfortable, which I believe is part of at least the culture of people I got to to meet, but also it becomes very strategic in creating business opportunities because you do want to offer a chance or to sit down and talk to people who are kind to you. Well, also one other thing, uh, you are an Italian. Of course, we know about the Italian food, uh, the pastas, the pizzas and everything that comes out of Italy. And how did you enjoy the Hyderabadi biryani or any other food? Well, uh, I enjoy it a lot, and uh, as you know, I was I did a pretty good job uh, handling uh, spicy food in India. So uh, that was a, a game that I kind of wanted to play to see how far I could go as far as spicy was concerned. Uh, what surprised me about um, the uh, food culture in India is the variety. See, coming from outside the country, the type of Indian food that you get to eat in Europe or in America is kind of westernized. Yeah. But when you get to India, you understand immediately that there's hundreds of plates. And that was a big uh, surprise to me. We are in Dublin. And do you find any similarities between Dublin and Hyderabad to start with? Well, that's a very good question. Um, Top of my head, I would say yes. Both cities, Hyderabad and Dublin, are uh, tech capitals or are becoming uh, fastly tech capitals. Uh, So there's a clear tech connection between the two cities. And what I would say excites me the most about being in Dublin and about having visited Hyderabad and hopefully coming back soon is the energy that you feel in the air. You are in two places in the world where you feel things are happening. And there are not many places in the world where you can have this feeling. I spent years in the US, I lived in Canada, I'm from Italy, and I can probably count in one hand places that gave me that feeling. You are um, talking to people, you are meeting people, you are spending time in a place where things are actually happening. That is... Um, a feeling that really excites me a lot about Dublin and Hyderabad. Interesting. So, so let me tell you, it's not just about Hyderabad. You go to Bangalore, you go to Mumbai, you go to Delhi. It's the same energy you will find it. I think I'll make sure next time you travel to uh, India, you are visiting all these cities and also some uh, cities which are probably not very popular in Europe or in the US. Now, uh, the next question I have, uh, Professor, is also in the entrepreneurship space, right? So you are a, you lead the entrepreneurship program here. Now, how do you think uh, India being an aspirational society, 
people leaving a lot of their jobs good cushy comfortable jobs just like i did i left my comfortable job at mckinsey and moving into the uh, entrepreneurship space do you see that happening around the world do you see that primarily happening in india or in dublin or any other thoughts around that well uh, i don't mean to lecture anyone but let's uh, step back for a second from your question and ask ourselves what makes entrepreneurs great entrepreneurs most of the time it's about knowledge of product for instance or knowledge about the market but most of the times there's one clear element that all entrepreneurs have in common which is culture so culture is an element that you need to have in place in any society if you want to see entrepreneurship flourishing you can be a genius product wise you can know market inside out but if you're not driven by the desire of creating your own thing but a desire of moving up the ladder and possibly generating well for yourself and society then there's no product knowledge that will do that itself so i haven't seen this anywhere i can certainly see that i saw this uh, desire aspiration in india would that suffice to make india the next big entrepreneurship society culture in the world it's too early to say but certainly some key elements are in place deep knowledge about product and passion and desire to move up the ladder hmm? what i also would say as not necessarily a cons but as an area where more work has to be done is market knowledge what i mean for that is not simply market knowledge uh the the knowledge that someone can have about india is about connecting to other markets around the world okay the more you connect to global markets the more you deal with sophisticated customers different requirements which are going to push you to get better every day on the product you bring to the market so global connectivity i would say is an area where you know i suppose india can invest in the coming years and and uh how can students individuals corporate professionals or aspiring entrepreneurs how can they develop that passion or that motivation to go global because the market itself is pretty huge right the indian market itself is very huge you don't even need to step out but i understand that what you are saying hey the product the requirement could be much more sophisticated if we step out of the market into global territories so that's a great motivation but how can somebody do that realistically that's another very good question uh, i don't think there's any shortcuts so first off i do believe there's great value in spending some time abroad and challenging yourself in learning new culture in learning new business practices in learning business models that are successful somewhere else which you can import back to your home country okay now going global is easier said than done again there's no shortcut the two most common pathways that i can see is one joining a business school at global level enroll in a program but there i would have something to say which is do apply for top tier colleges or don't at all the second is about getting a job in a corporation outside your own country that again is a process you if you think that getting a job in ireland uh and in germany and us and canada is the result of you putting together a cv and a cover letter i think you are you are uh following the wrong strategy so every process that will take you to either study abroad or work abroad every process is made of steps and understanding what these steps are and how to execute them to increase your chances i believe is fundamentally important so so i am completely completely a believer in uh working abroad studying abroad building relationships abroad because that helped me grow as an individual and also in my career and absolutely if there is an opportunity folks should go ahead and pursue those opportunities should really push hard for that and if there is no opportunity somebody should at least try to create one for themselves and it can be probably a course could be expensive for a lot of us though right uh, or it could be just say pushing and seeing applying for a different job in a different country that's again very difficult but at least trying to follow people follow let's say influencers or follow individuals who are doing good stuff from around the world so that you can hear at least from their perspective what's happening that's a very easy step that you can immediately do after this video i can probably share some links of folks who are doing some really good stuff from around the world 
so following these people understanding where they are coming from understanding how it's differently done in different societies versus india might be a good starting point any recommendations anybody would you would recommend from the let's say the american markets or the european markets that somebody from india can follow and learn a lot about from business uh yes so first off i am and this is not mystery between you and i i'm a big fan of uh the prof g show the prof g podcast uh some of you may already know what i'm talking about if in case you don't just uh, check it out but um at a more personal level I like a lot to read uh, books about um entrepreneurs biographies um uh the book about the um life of Steve Jobs I I found it very insightful uh the book about Michael O'Leary uh the unofficial biography by the way of Michael O'Leary the um the boss of Ryanair is extremely insightful I believe there's so much to learn by reading good biographies of successful people interesting interesting at least i did not read the one uh, that you mentioned at the end so i'll give it a shot soon uh, but uh, thank you so much professor for this conversation but uh, any parting thoughts with respect to how you would say somebody can make that switch or grow in their career whether it is from corporate to entrepreneurship or whether it is from going from a data scientist to a data manager or whether somebody taking that risk to take that next step right what do you recommend somebody to like do if somebody is looking to grow in their career as you mentioned that india is already an aspirational society what can somebody do to fulfill their aspirations well i believe uh there might not be one single answer everyone might have their own model to follow let me reflect on my journey uh what paid off greatly for me was to secure good mentors I was only uh I wouldn't say only I was always trying to uh spend time with insightful and 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 bright people uh, in the academic space in the business space even if uh, that required working hard even if that required not earning any dollar I travel so much just to spend time with fame professor that only now I see the value of learning from them so don't be greedy invest time and resources trying to spend time with uh insightful people uh shed of them uh be humble enough uh to put yourself in a position to learn from those who have already achieved some important results in life that is the first mandatory piece uh that everyone should be uh considering and the second is that good things happen if you plan them good things don't happen overnight every career trajectory can be planned Thank you so much. Thank you so much professor. Look forward to having you more over uh here and uh yeah, have a good day. Thank you Pavan. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.